Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you pray with me? Come, Lord Jesus, quickly. For many of us are waiting, and not one of us will be disappointed. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Dear people of God and fellow redeemed in Christ Jesus, the text before us this morning is the text of that gospel reading from the Gospel of Luke. I invite you to have your Bibles open to that or your bulletins open to that as we walk through it together. Setting the scene a little bit is helpful to understand the text, however. If you have your Bibles, you can see back in Luke chapter 14, the beginning of chapter 14, that Jesus is at the house of a, quote, ruler of the Pharisees. And he's there for this banquet to take place. And right out the bat, at the beginning of the banquet, the question comes up, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Here Jesus is probably hoping and praying for a nice relaxing meal in the midst of this ruler of the Pharisees' house, if it could be done. And they're already testing him because before Jesus is placed a man with dropsy. And they ask, can you heal on the Sabbath? Jesus' reply to them is simply to heal the man, send him on his way, and ask them the question, which of you who has a donkey if it falls into a hole on the Sabbath wouldn't go rescue it? Well, duh, they would. First scene. Second scene of this same dinner is a question of honor at the table. Let's face it, we know about these rulers of the Pharisees. Maybe we can even identify with these rulers of a Pharisee that we like to have the head of the table at the meal. Or at the very least, today at the potluck, we want to be those people sitting in the front row because they get to go first, right? You sit down at the wedding feast of your friend, the wedding reception, and you pray that your table isn't the one A, by the bathroom, and B, the one served last. Because you like the place of honor. And Jesus said, seat yourself at the lower seats so that you can be moved up instead of the reverse if someone of greater honor comes in to you. Second scene. Now the third scene. When you invite people to your banquets, don't just invite your cronies. Don't just invite your friends, the one who are going to make you look good. Invite all. End of third scene. Cue our scene. Starting at verse 15 today where the text tells us that Jesus uses this parable or this story to uh, to, to teach today. He says, A man once gave a great banquet and invited uh, invited many. Verse 16. Now, this is a, a little bit, context is helpful, and it's a little bit maybe hard for us to see. This is the fact that they've sent out the invitations, and they've already got the yes responses. So they already know, the master knows who's going to be there. Well, then they go about their preparations. Verse 17, when the time for the banquet comes, he sends his servant to tell those who are invited. Now, you may kind of know what this sounds like in life, right? When mom or dad used to open the door and you were outside playing in the afternoon, and they opened the door and yelled, I'll take this away for a minute, Dinner's ready! Or the camp up at Minnesota where we used to go for church camp, Camp Omega. You knew what time the meals were, but there was still a large dinner bell that could be heard through the entire camp. And even though dinner was at 5 o'clock, what did you wait for? The bell. And when the announcement goes out that dinner's ready, as a kid, you didn't lollygag your way back into the house. You ran. When the bell at Omega rang, you ran, at least till you got to the 75 stairs to get to the dining hall. Then nobody ran anymore. But we understand how it works. The servant goes out and says, the feast is ready. 
Come in to the banquet. And we see what happens. The first one gives an excuse. And the the excuse is, I bought a field and I've got to go see my field. Please excuse me. The second one, I bought five yoke of oxen and I have to go examine them. Please excuse me. I know there's a lot of farmers out there, and I don't know if there's any field more important or tractor more important than dinner. I could be wrong. And then it goes on. Then there's the last one. I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot go. And what we see here in the text is those who were invited, those who even said they would be there at the great feast of this rich master, they turn and deny and reject the invitation. Those guests who had already said yes suddenly come up with better things to do. Well, context is helpful. Where was Jesus again in telling this account? He's in the house of a Pharisee. He's in the house of one of those people who is a Jew of Jews, an Israelite of Israelites, one who knows the word of God, one who knows the history of God's people and knows for sure that they are a part of it. One who was invited. And as they wait... Those people of Israel over the course of years and years of waiting for the master to say the feast is ready, they have become busy with other things. So what does the master do? The banquet's ready. The food is on the table. It's getting cold. And instead of fighting with those who were invited, who have rejected the the invitation, he sends his servants out. And he sends them to the immediate area, to the city. Verse 21. Go out to the, the, the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. Invite all for whom you come in contact with. And yet this still is not enough to fill the master's house. So he sends the servants out again to the highways and hedges. And he sends them out to compel people to come to the feast that has been prepared. Because the house still has room. So the servant goes out from the master with the good news to the poor. He goes out from the master with the good news to the crippled, to the blind, to the lame. He goes out with the good news that the banquet is ready and prepared. The invited guests have vacated their seats, and for you there is room. Come and sit at the master's feast. We are those ones who are now invited. We are those ones who find ourselves in the midst of our sin as poor, poor, miserable sinners. We are the ones in the midst of this find ourselves as crippled, as blind, and as lame because of the sin that so heavily hangs upon us. We are those who, as Paul writes to the Ephesians, are far off. And yet the servant of the master is sent to us. God himself sends his servants to us to tell us the good news that in Christ Jesus the feast is prepared for you. To you poor miserable sinners, to us who are poor and lame and blind, the feast is ready. This is the good news that we have today. That by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are no longer strangers in this house. The call has gone out, and we are now fellow citizens, saints, members of the household of God, welcomed to the very table of God 
by his gracious invitation. So today, hear these words go out to you. Come, all you who are Christ's, beloved by the Master, come. The feast is prepared. In the name of Jesus, amen. I invite you to stand. May the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus now and always. Amen.